Here we are. Hello and welcome. Welcome to everybody that is joining us uh, live today for our Low Tox Home Workshop. Uh, I will introduce you shortly to our guest host, but also I wanted to, yeah, just welcome you. Thank you all for coming. A little bit of a different workshop for us today. Uh, I'm normally doing all the talking, but I'm very happy that I won't be doing it all today. But it is all still tied in with decluttering and getting organized at home uh, by going through our cupboards and letting go of all the toxic chemicals in our homes. And as I said, we have a guest speaker with us today, Leanne Watson from Amazing Sense. She will tell us all about her and how we can live in a low tox home. Uh, as I said, this is being recorded so we can share it, but we're, we're happy to have any questions along the way if you want to unmute yourself and ask or use the chat to ask questions. And if anyone is watching this on the recording, you can also use the comments to ask questions. We might not get back to you quite so quickly, but we certainly can answer any questions by using the YouTube comments. So don't forget to use that as we go along the way. So again, thank you and welcome. Uh, glad you are all here and welcome Leanne. Thanks so much for coming. You may take the stage. <laughs> Glad to be here. Um, would you be able to hand over hosting to me? Yes, so you can sure can. I have sharing. done that. Yep, go thank for you. it. Excellent. So um, happy to be here. Um, glad to have some new people to corrupt mm. with all of the wonderful things that I've done throughout the last 30 years of my life. And uh, just to give you a bit of background, I used to be an interior decorator and I loved what I did and I made people so, so happy um, by making their surroundings beautiful. And I never thought I would ever give that up until my husband got sick and Dave was running a marathon and had a heart attack. That didn't happen very much back then. And, uh, and uh, he was diagnosed with chronic SLE, which is a nasty form of lupus that generally gives them about five years to live. And he's still alive here 30 years later. Not doing quite so well at the moment, but uh, we're doing our best to deal with that. Um, so, yeah, 25 years more. And uh, we started to use aromatherapy because he decided that he didn't want to do all that modern medicine were offering. And, and I love that we can have a choice with the things that we do with our own body. And so we decided to try all sorts of natural therapies and they all helped in some way, shape or form, but they were all around going to see people, practitioners, cost a lot of money, he wasn't working and it just was getting too much for us. So I decided to try aromatherapy initially just to help with emotional things and, uh, and it did that. But the more that I used it, the more I thought my grand used to do something like this. And then it, I started to, to get really interested in like home remedies and old wives tales using herbs and aromatherapy and things that I could do and uh, and it really really shaped our life in a whole different way we are forever grateful for, for the journey and uh, have never waned never have stopped doing the things that we've learned it's just got bigger and bigger and bigger so about two months into uh, falling in love with oils, I actually went and studied under an aromatherapist. And I remember the day that she cut a fresh clove of garlic in half and rubbed the garlic juice into the soles of my feet, um, the instep part where the skin isn't quite so thick. And then we timed how long it took for the garlic to get to my mouth. So after 30 seconds, I got kind of like a tinny sort of metallic taste in my mouth. After 48 seconds, it was like I had eaten the garlic and I stunk of garlic for about two days after it. And it was a really massive realization that I thought my skin was this protective layer on me and I used to touch things when I was cleaning and I, I didn't even give it a second thought. And I always pulled up with a headache on a Sunday. I used to blame it on stress, but it was because I cleaned on a Saturday. 
And so I made uh, uh, myself a promise that I would get rid of all of the chemicals in my home. And it didn't happen overnight. Um, there are some things that you are totally addicted to and you're reluctant to get rid of them. But the less that you have around you, the more that you become, you find chemical smells quite abhorrent. And I'm to the stage now and have been for probably 25 years where I can smell people's washing powder on them. And I can't have a chemical in my home because it overwhelms me and makes me feel really yucky and, and a little bit annoyed with the world. So, uh, yeah, so it will be something that you'll take bit by bit. Um, you know, when I won't be able to teach you everything today, um, but my aim is that when I finish teaching people, um, and I, that's probably the wrong word, as I continue teaching people, I will talk to you about changing things like toothpaste and mouthwash and shampoo and conditioner, and I make my own deodorant. There's nothing in my bathroom that contains any chemicals. And, uh, and I like even makeup, I've, uh, I did resort to getting my lips brushed just recently so that I didn't have to wear any um, lipstick because it's full of lead. So uh, yeah, and I've got like a mineral powder on and that's it. And I'm 63 years old. So I, I think I'm doing quite well. So um, yeah, so I want to teach you everything, but today I want to concentrate on, on the cleaning products because that's what you came to learn. Um, and as Julie was saying, it actually clicks in really well with decluttering because you don't need to have one of everything that's been marketed to you in the past. Um, I live in a little eight square um, it's, it's a beach shack. Um, we shifted here four years ago and we went from 32 squares down to eight squares. So there's not a lot of room and, uh, and you just don't have any place to put anything. So you have to be really careful with what you have. So I'm just going to pop up a screen for you to show you what the inside of my kitchen cupboard looks like. I took this just this morning. So this is under the sink. Now, because our house is so tiny, we have this, a little portion to the right of the sink that's got drawers and then a, a corner cupboard at the side that has pots and pans and, and bowls in, a stove and then a tiny pantry. So I don't have a lot of room to put anything. So this here, um, I've got a, a water filter and that takes up most of the bottom shelf. So that's a re reverse osmosis to get rid of all the chemicals out of the water. Takes out 99.9% .9 of fluoride and chlorine and um, heavy metals and everything like that. I've got my compost bin down the bottom and I save the eggshells because I use those to repel um, slugs and snails in the garden. We crush them up and put them onto our organic garden. Um, and then I've got my um, dishwashing liquid. So that's the only thing I don't make is the dishwashing liquid because I couldn't find a recipe that worked well enough. We don't have a dishwasher. We're washing greasy dishes by hand. We need to have something that works really well. And this is all natural and it's made by an Australian company called Abode. Uh, and it's, I buy it in five litre. Uh, I've got that uh, in the five litre in the laundry and just top up the smaller bottle. But everything else I make myself. Uh, so the one above here, this is a cleaning spray that um, my company manufacture. I can teach you to make it yourself if you want to. It's not a big deal. It's just that some people are extremely um, reluctant to make things because I think it takes time. Um, so that cleans basically every surface in my home. I use that to wipe the mirrors in the bathroom. I clean the um, shower with it. Uh, in between, I do a scrub every eight weeks. I'll teach you those recipes. I, um, I, the cleaning spray will clean the top of the oven. I clean the tiles behind the oven. I clean every surface, whether it's wood, stone, glass, anything, we clean with that. So it's made with um, oils of lemon, lavender, tea tree, eucalyptus and peppermint. Um, and I chose them for their cleaning properties. But the other thing that they do is they repel ants 
and mice and also flies and other insects. So um, it means that every surface in my home has that so that we don't get all of the problems with insect invasion that other people do. And that's what my house smells like. Um, I'm not into using vaporizers a lot because I find that they're not sustainable. They, this, the oils just go into the atmosphere. You don't get the best results from it. So I, it's not something I do. But every time people come to my house, they walk in and say, oh, my God, it smells so amazing in here. And it's purely the residue of this on, on all of the surface of my home. Um, the basistos, this is a, um, we don't use this grade in therapeutic aromatherapy, but I use it so much for cleaning that I buy this and it's an Australian black brand. You girls in America or the Philippines, you may be able to source a cleaning grade of eucalyptus. Um, so just for instance here, I pay for that $28. It's a 500 ml bottle. I buy it from Costco. I don't know whether you girls have that available um, or whether they would have it in your country. But you should be able to um, buy a cleaning grade. It's still a pure essential oil. It's just what's left over in the vat when they bottle off for the therapeutics. So that costs you know, $28, whereas I can't buy eucalyptus that I would sell in my company for anywhere near that price. So I just buy it from Costco. So where possible, you know, you will get the lower grades, um, but not fragrant oils, not synthetics. It still has to be a pure essential oil. Um, and then I've just got a big bottle of um, peppermint there and, um, and that's a concentrate that I made up of the cleaning spray. I've got some salt there because I use salt um, not not in our food. I use Himalayan salt in our food, but the sex of salt I've got because we. I also do a workshop on gardening, and I teach you how to make sprays to kill off the weeds and stuff like that with the um, with the salt. So uh, yeah, so that's basically it. Other than a round container that I've got in the bathroom that I make like a scouring cream uh, with bicarbon vinegar, I'll go through that for you as well. And so that's it. That's all there is underneath the cupboard. So just as well, uh, I don't need a lot because I don't have anywhere to put it. So um, any questions on that so far? No, 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 I haven't got a question, but I have the cleaning spray, of course, because you were very kind to give it to me when I came to speak at your event the other week. And it, it is, it smells so nice and does such a good job of uh, cleaning. I use it mainly in the kitchen, but looking forward to hearing a little bit more how you use it around the rest of the home. Excellent. So um, one of the good things that I find is dusting, because often mm -hmm. when we dust, we fluff the dust up into the atmosphere and uh, and then it just settles again <laughs> it's just pointless so um generally with that I'll just spray it over like I dust on a fairly regular basis because we live by the sea so you get like a black sort of dust and um and so I spray it with that and just wipe over yeah you can use some people like to use paper towels. Um, I prefer to use cloths that I can wash again, unless it's something really dirty that I don't want to wash. Um, and yeah, just spray it on and, and straight over the top. The great thing is, is that you're not leaving a soap residue behind. And soap, and I know we've all been brainwashed that we have to have soap and we have to have bubbles and um, it leaves a residue and the residue is sticky and then dirt sticks to it. So it's really hard for people to get over that soap thing at the beginning. They think it doesn't wash properly. It does. It does. Everything around me is washed with essential oils and bicarb and vinegar and all sorts of natural products. So without any of the soap. So like if say the dog had made a mess on the carpet or something like that and I sprayed it with the kitchen spray and then wiped it up and then I'd usually spray a little bit and let it soak in as well there's nothing sticky about it so it doesn't attract dirt as people walk over that area and I didn't realize the extent of it until 
I had a new house and brand new carpet. Didn't have to get it cleaned for about 12 months. The moment I got it cleaned, it had that sticky residue and then it got dirty really, really quickly. And that was when I realised what soap was doing and made a, an effort to uh, get rid of that out of my life. So, yeah, it doesn't leave any sticky residue at all. So you're, you're not ending up with chemicals on every um, surface of your home. Um, you just got to change over. And I, I think this is the hardest thing is because we've used specific things for so long and we think that they're the only thing that are going to work. Um, I make my own washing powder and I love it. Um, the reason I decided to do it was purely because of the transfer of chemicals but within a really short time I used to get terrible urinary tract infections and from I think I was 18 months old when I got the first one and until I was in my early 30s I had been on antibiotics at least twice a month and I'd, they'd done exploratory surgeries to see what was going on. Nothing worked. I just, I, I got one, I had to go on antibiotics and this was happening all the time. And so I started to make my own washing powder. And I, after about a week, my husband said to me, you haven't had a urinary tract infection. And I thought, well, I don't know what I'd done that had done that because I changed several things all at, one, all at once. And it wasn't until we went on a cruise a couple of years later and I sent my clothes out to get washed. Normally I take my own washing powder, but I was being decadent and I thought I'll get someone else to do it for me. And within 24 hours of putting on the underwear that had been washed, I had a urinary tract infection. So I will never stop making my own washing powder and I never leave home without it if I'm going away. And in fact, sometimes I will take my own towels and sheets because towels and sheets have residues of the chemicals that they're washed in when you're staying somewhere else. So, uh, yeah, so I've taught that to so many people and so many people have let me know that their little girls who are getting urinary tract infections no longer get them. You know, there's so many things that roll on from the chemicals that are around us. So I'm going to put up some screens and, and start teaching you about the different ones that we, uh, we use. I'll just open all of these windows. Um, Okay, so when you begin to make your cleaning products, first you've got to make the decision. The second is that you've got to throw away the nasty chemicals that you have in your home because if they're there, you're going to keep using them. And I've had many people say to me, oh, I just bought some new washing powder. I, can I use it? And I said, so, well, not really. Um, and they say, well, what can I do with it? And me being glib and sarcastic will often say, well, give it to someone you don't like because it's so harmful to you in so many ways. So when you think about the things that you get, you know, I don't know whether you have skin issues or whether you're concerned about the chemical buildup in your body that could lead to changing the, um, lead to changing the cells in our body, whether you get urinary tract infections, whether you're concerned about the environment and sustainability, it doesn't matter where you're coming from, you need to make the decision and then you need to get rid of the things maybe choose five or six things and start there um, if you're stalling then you just need to have a little bit more learning around it so what do you need to purchase you need to purchase um, what I call a food grade um, bicarb so the one that I normally get is this one here which is from Costco it's Arm and Hammer um, the Americans call it baking soda. We call it bicarb here in Australia. Um, and it needs to be aluminium free. Now, the reason it needs to be aluminium free is because aluminium crosses the, the, into the blood just as much as chemicals, other chemicals chemicals do and too much aluminium in our system causes over time dementia uh, confusion those types of things so food grade is the best so depending on the country that you're in look for bicarb soda or baking soda um, electric soda is another thing that we use or washing soda it's called and um, 
you don't have to use it. I sometimes will make washing powder without it. Um, but if it's available, it's a good thing to have. Citric acid. So if you've ever had a bath bomb, bath bomb when it hits the water and it fizzes, that's citric acid in there. So that's usually, you can find that in the cooking aisle of your supermarket, but there are places where you can get it in bulk as well. So you just need to Google it, bulk citric acid and see where food grade citric acid and see where, where you can find it. And also white vinegar. Like I buy white vinegar in five litre bottles because we use it quite a lot in cleaning products. Um, the other thing that I would suggest is a thing called a solubilizer, and we stock that in our range. It's in our accessories category on our website. It looks like this, and it is, it's the, the actual name of it is Krillet 4, um, but it also goes under the polysorbate 80 range, but it's natural. So it comes from olive oil. So polysorbate 80, the chemical side of it, gets a really big bad rap, and I totally understand that. But legally, we have to put that on the label. But it's an olive oil extract. And what it does is it actually blends oil and water together. So if we don't use it, like with the making the cleaning spray, if we didn't put solubilizer into it, within... 30 seconds of you putting everything in there and shaking it, it splits out and the oils float at the top. And so the sprayers connect down to the bottom of the bottle. You're spraying away thinking that you're getting all of the properties of the oils when in actual fact, there's a glob of oil sitting there at the end. It hasn't worked the way that it's meant to. So the solubilizer actually blends them together and it goes like a milky color. It's hard because these bottles are um, they're dark. You probably can't see it, but it's actually, um, it looks like milk. So it goes mm. white. And the ratio is that if you were putting 50 drops of pure essential oil in, you put 50 drops of the solubilizer. So it's a one to one ratio. And the um, ratio of the amount of oils to the water is if you were making a little 50 ml atomizer, you would put 25 drops of pure essential oil. So you divide it by two. So that's a one to two ratio. Mm. So it's not rocket science. And look, if you ever get stuck with anything, we've got two um, Facebook, um, we've got a business Facebook, which is Amazing Sense Aromatherapy, uh, which is open to everyone. And if we really like you, we'll let you into our private group. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Julie's in there. Um, it's, um, it's really, it's the most amazing group. It's full of recipes and you can go in there and you can ask if you don't know what to look for or you can just go and, and search for things and find things there um, but both of them have loads of information on them they're very welcome so the private one is called the secret oil garden and if you want to come into that please just put that that you met me through Julie and that's fine. You don't need to answer all the questions. Okay. Uh, Leanne, Janet asked a question about the vinegar. Yes. She's got, uh, she says, sudsy white vinegar. She's asking the question. Sudsy? Sudsy white vinegar. Is that a... Is that a um, it might be an American thing, perhaps. Yeah, I'd have to see. It should be. like There's not a lot that they can do to... Mm. It's, it's sometimes the debauchery that goes on is is really bad mm. but generally if you look at the label um you'll be able to pick straight away whether it's got chemicals i wouldn't if it's giving you suds probably they've added something to it i mm. would imagine yeah mm. it's a hard one um if you would like to um you could take a picture of that mm. and um, send it to to me via the the um, Facebook site and mm. I can have a look what's in it and just mm. identify it for you if you like Thank you. but you know right. vinegar shouldn't cost a lot it, it just plain white vinegar um, I pay about I think it's about six dollars for five liters mm. yeah and it, I, if it anything's added I tend to go back to just the basics um, 
Okay, so what sort of containers should you use? Glass with oils is the best, but sometimes glass is not possible. Like, you know, you can't have things like shampoos and conditioners in tiled areas in glass. Um, and I found that because I use a big bottle of the cleaning spray, it was too heavy. And often when you're cleaning, your hands are wet and I broke a few glass ones. So um, what we use is... Um, for the majority of things where we can't use glass is called PET. So it's a, a plastic that is designed to take pure essential oils because pure essential oils will actually eat through plastic um, if, if it's not the right type of plastic. And I learned that the hard way. Uh, the first time I made it, I put it in the cupboard under the sink and then went to grab something and there was just a pool of, of, uh, of the liquid on the bottom because it had eaten through the actual container. So PET plastic is what you're looking for there. Um, but you know, where possible, I will use glass and it, it's reusable, whereas the PET, you could probably refill five or six times, but then it starts to downgrade with the pure essential oils. Um, the next one. Okay, I'll do some recipes with you. So this is kitchen and laundry. Um, the cleaning spray is the one that we have available ready-made for you if you want to, but if you'd like to make it yourself, this is just a small 100 ml size. So it has 15 drops of lemon, 12 drops of lavender, um, 10 drops of eucalyptus, eight drops of tea tree, and five drops of peppermint. Um, I can give a copy of this to you, Julie, if you want to get it out. To uh, I downloaded it, but it came in a zip from Canva, so I might have to maybe give it to Mary Lou to do some magic with her skills uh, so that it can go out to the girls. I'm fine with that. Um, so the reason I chose these particular oils tells a story about it. So lemon is... We know it's a bleach. Um, I used to bleach my hair with it when I was a kid. We'd, I'd put lemon streaks through it, just plain lemon juice, and then go out in the sun and you get blonde streaks. We know it's antibacterial, antiviral, antifungal. So it has the most of the oils in there is, um, is the lemon for that reason. Lemon is also really amazing to stop bleeding. If you've got lemon and central oil at home and you cut your finger on a knife or something like that and there's blood spurting everywhere or a razor cut that won't stop bleeding, just straight lemon, lemon essential oil onto it. Doesn't hurt. I thought it would hurt and I was a bit disappointed when it didn't. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it just stops the bleeding. It's a vasoconstrictor, so it um, shuts down the blood vessels. Lavender is it's really good for us. It makes us feel calm and happy and the world's a wonderful place, but it's really great as an antibacterial as well. And it's also a healer. So it's a, a handy one because a lot of time we have cuts and scratches and things on our hands and chemicals would really make that hurt. Um, eucalyptus, as an interior decorator, I used to carry a bottle of eucalyptus in my pocket all the time, all the time. Never went to, uh, to do a, an inspection, make sure everything was going right before handover without a bottle of eucalyptus. And we, I used to put it onto a cotton ball and if there was a mark on a curtain or carpet or a couch or something like that, I would just dab it onto the, the stain and I remember the first time I ever did it, I thought, oh, my God, what have I done? There was like a, a whole thing of greasy oil stain. And then I walked away to do something else, came back, and it had evaporated out with the stain. So it, it's amazing what it can do. So eucalyptus you will use a lot. Um, you know, it's great for getting bubble gum or sticky things or, you know, stickers off containers and things like that off. Um uh, the most I've ever moved with it was we dropped a little pot of stain that we were painting the wood around a, a timber window onto brand new carpet and I got that out with straight eucalyptus. So it's yeah anything really really bad you can have like a little this size 50 ml of the straight eucalyptus and spray it onto just about anything. Um, I wouldn't do it onto satin or silk but everything else is generally fine. 
So um, tea tree, I popped into this for the antiviral, antibacterial, antifungal, and it's also cleaning oil. And peppermint, I put in purely to prevent the ants and the, and the spiders. And it's really funny when you mix this because you're going from 15 drops of lemon down to five drops of peppermint. The strongest smell is definitely peppermint. Um, and that's the one that, that comes through because it's a, um, a higher sort of level of smell. And then you put your 50 drops of solubilizer, you top it up to the 100 ml with 85 ml of filtered water. Um, filtered is better. Tap water has so many chemicals in it and the chemicals downgrade the pure essential oils. And you just give it a shake. The first week, it'll go from, you know, milky to really, really white. And once it's white, you don't have to shake it every time. But most of us do purely by habit. We'll pick things up and shake it. Now, I don't have a dishwasher at the moment, but we do use a dishwasher in the factory for because people bring back the pure essential oils bottles, the little glass bottles for us to recycle. And um, so we don't use chemicals in that. We use, we make our own dishwasher powder. Now, when I shifted to the house that I'm in, I got a phone call from the lady that purchased our home from us and she I don't know how she got my number I think she asked the neighbor or something like that and she said to me you have the best smelling dishwasher in the world tell me what you used and I told her and she said to me oh don't you make it up and I said no and she said oh no I can't do that and this just blows me away that people think it's so hard to do something so so easy and all it is, is a, a half a cup of citric acid that you bury at the bottom of the container because it reacts with fluid. And then you put on top of that uh, one cup of the bicarb, a third of a cup of electric soda, which is the also called washing soda. And then just drop 30 drops of lemon essential oil into it. And then once the lemon's absorbed into the top layer, then you mix it all through. And um, I just have that in a square, um, I think it's a Tupperware container actually, and it sits um, at, at, on top of the dishwasher at work and we just throw a, tea, a tablespoon of it into, just straight in over the dishes or the bottles. And, um, and then I put white vinegar in as the conditioner. So that's it. Costs around about 15 cents a wash compared to about a dollar 20 for a tablet and i can taste the chemicals on utensils and plates and cups when i'm out because i'm not used to it so you imagine the chemicals that are in there that are going into your mouth and into your body so how long does it take me to make things um i journal into my diary when i'm going to have what i call a mixing day um, I sit down, obviously this picture was taken when I was having one of those days. Um, I sit down and I, I would spend maybe an hour, maximum an hour and a quarter. And I make all my personal hygiene, all of my cleaning products, all of my skincare. I reckon if I went out and bought what I made, I would be probably in the vicinity of about $600. Because like my night serum that I make for about $12 would cost somewhere like about $200 in a shop. My day cream, everything. We spend so much money when we go out. Now, I live an hour and a half from Melbourne. Um, my closest shops are half an hour away. So if you look at what you pay in petrol, the wear and tear on your car, the time it takes you to get a car park, the crowds you have to go through, the smelly people, they're all, people all smell to me, um, the stores, the way that they place things so that you purchase, it's all done, to, it's marketing. Um, you know, the fact that you go into a store and you've got a list with four or five things on and you come out with four or five bags, the time that you spend shopping every week, like, you know, I, if I use an hour and a quarter every eight weeks um, compared to people who go shopping four or five times a week and get, you know, spend money that they don't need to, 
I don't even know how much I say, but it's a lot. And, you know, Dave and I, we grow our own veggies. We would be lucky to spend $80 to $100 a week um, because we just don't go in there for anything else but food and ingredients for things that we make. So, uh, yeah, so don't get into the, oh, my God, this is going to take me a long time. If you've got children, they love making stuff like this. Um, I've got a seven-year-old granddaughter who I think that's everything about nanny is smell. And, um, and it's fun. Like, you know, she loves making bath bombs with me and soaps and cleaning products. Um, I let her make up roll-ons and, and um, body lotions and stuff. She loves it. It's really good fun. So don't, don't get caught up in that. It's just new and new means, okay, I've got to do it once before I realize how simple it is. Now, the laundry powder I talked briefly about, um, I'll show you the container that I use. So it's a tin. Get a tin if you can. It needs to be airtight at the top because pure essential oils will actually evaporate. And I did try a jar that had um, a top that looked like it would be airtight, but it had a plastic around the outside and the oils ate that. So it wasn't airtight within a week. Um, so yeah, so these are great. Um, I don't usually make a full one of these. I usually do about three kilos. So it's just a multiplier of that. And that's what it looks like. So this is the powder. So all that's in there is, and no one ever believes me, is bicarb and cleaning grade eucalyptus. Some people put in the, the washing soda or the electric soda. Um, I don't. Generally, I just do the, the eucalyptus and the bicarb. But in saying that, I don't have kids that play cricket. So, uh, and I don't wear a, a lot of white clothes. So if you wear a lot of white, then you will need to add the washing soda to it. Um, sometimes I do need to soak things like, you know, if we've had spaghetti and somebody splashed it down the front of their shirt, um, I might soak it, uh, just put a, a, you know, about a tablespoon of that into a, a bucket of water and just soak it overnight. Um, if it's a really bad stain, I'll spray eucalyptus directly onto it. But most things just wash out everything straight away. So I have a front loader and I just chuck um, a big heap tablespoon of uh, the powder straight into it because top loaders generally want to have a liquid rather than a powder. Um, so it just goes straight in. And... Um, and then I just turn it on. It's just that simple. So I have had so many people in the past who've looked at me and said to me, does it work? And I want to laugh because I don't make any money out of teaching you this. I'm not supplying the eucalyptus or the bicarb to you. What I'm doing is giving you a gift because it's reducing such a high amount of, of chemical transfer. So I don't make anything out of it. I'm just sharing with you what I do. And I'm always tempted to say, do I look dirty or something? Because it's just the way that we've been brought up. We think we need those, those the soap and the leather and everything like that. It cleans really well. And the other thing that I've found is that clothes don't deteriorate as fast because there's none of that stuff in the fabric that's causing it to deteriorate. I don't use any fabric softener. I've never had to. Um, if, if I've had things on the line on a really hot day and the towels are a bit stiff because there wasn't any wind, I just chuck it in the dryer with a face washer with whatever I want the towels to smell like, you know, a couple of drops of jasmine or something like that. And put it in there and it's as soft as. So yeah, fabric softener isn't really toxic. So you don't have to buy that in your, anymore. There is a pre-wash spray. I don't use that, but um, lots of my customers do. Um, I made it up. It's kind of like just to move, you know, really bad stains. So kids who leave grass stains all over their cricket gear and that type of thing. So that recipe is there. So my, my cupboard in my laundry is no different really to what 
my kitchen cupboard is like there's very little in there like I have my bulk bicarb my bulk um, eucalyptus and I also have a bathroom cleanser um, which I think I've got that in here as well that I can show you I'll get a new one sorry I should have had time to put this onto a, a powerpoint for you no, who do I need that one this is the right one yeah, here it is. So the bathroom cleanser, I actually dropped mine and broke it this morning. It was in a glass one. Um, so this one I made up to, does anyone have trouble with their shower screens where they get like a sort of a scum on it and it never comes up clean unless you use really wicked chemicals that will kill you if you sniff them too much um, so this is I made it up for that so I called it the bathroom cleanser but in saying that I use this in the kitchen as well like it, it makes my stainless steel sink come up like brand new um, if I've spilt something on the top the stove top and it's like burnt in I use this because it just scours lightly to take things off that are burnt in. Um, I love it for doing the tiles. But the one that really pleases me the most is that when you do the glass and everything comes off, like we don't use soap, so we don't have a lot of soap residue on, on the glass. And because you use naturals you're not scratching the glass so you're not getting that haze on the glass as well unless you've inherited the haze from other people so this has I just make it up in a little glass bowl that has a, a top that's airtight on it and I put in lemon tea tree thyme cedarwood mandarin and clove so clove is the biggest mold deterrent but it's not perfect you know, it can never do what a chemical does. So, you know, I don't get carried away with that. I just know that I might have to put a little bit more scrub in on the tiles during the grout. Often we actually inherit um, mould as well because it comes with the grout. In fact, it lives in the grout. And when you use chemicals on, on mould, it doesn't kill the mould. It just kills the surface ones. It bleaches the surface and you think it's gone where in actual fact it's still in there. So if you inherit a house, it could pay if there's a mould issue to actually pick out all of the grout and re-grout it. Let it dry, re-grout it, and then start from scratch. And if you learn to keep your shower water free like the last person in has to squeegee the shower to get rid of the water um, and you use the cleaning products like this you will find that the mold won't grow back again mold grows because of moisture uh, and I've done heaps of training under building biologists where they teach you all about ventilation and yeah, that's another whole learning curve. Um, if I have a my dryer, I have a condenser dryer because the dryer is in the same room as the bathroom. And it was just creating mayhem because there was so much, even though I had windows open and ventilating, it was too much water in the room. So you mix this up into bicarb and you add the vinegar. When you do that, there's a chemical reaction or go fizzy don't panic it's fun the kids love love it when they're mixing it and they get that it's like a science um, exercise and then once it's the almost to it's like a damp paste it's not like a wet paste and then I just grab it with my hand and then just wipe it onto the glass um, with the tiles I use a, a microfiber cloth and uh, everything just peels away and it's really really you get a great sense of achievement when you stand back and look at a sparkly clean um, shower without having used a chemical um, and people say oh you know you've got to scrub a bit harder but you know we didn't have gyms in my day housework was where you actually got your exercise so you're saving money on gym fees as well and it's good for you to bend and stretch so uh, yeah, it works really well. And the base of the shower, I just do that, that with a cloth. Sometimes I'll use a scrubbing brush. I generally only do that about once every eight weeks, um, do the cleanser, because I just spray with the, the cleaning spray in between. There is a mold spray here for you. If you have got a mold issue, you can make that up and spray it on to, um, to try and get rid of it before you go to the extent of replacing grout. 
Um, and the air freshener, I love the air freshener. People come out of the toilet going, oh, my God, that spray is amazing. <laughs> or they wash their hands and the hand wash that I make up and, and come out sniffing their hands going, what do you do? Where do you get that from? Um, but the smells are, re are really beautiful. And you can make up whatever you like. I'm just giving you here a, a for instance. And air freshener, a lot of people like citrus because citrus is that fresh, clean smell. And, uh, and it also overtakes other smells that you might have in the toilet. Um, in saying that, I make sprays for everything in my house. We've got a bed spray. I remember watching a, a documentary years ago where they did a close-up of what was lurking in your bed. And, um, yeah, you'd want a bed spray too if you, if you saw that. So I'm really big on, like, airing all of, you know, the doona, the under blankets, everything like that, vacuuming the, the mattress. But every time that I, I make the bed, I spray the pillows and then stand them up against the wall to dry. I spray the doona, I spray, spray the, the, the um, mattress or the mattress cover and, uh, and just leave it for five minutes and then come back and make it. And you dive into bed that night. It's just amazing. So the recipe I've got here is for smelly teenage boys. It's tea tree, lemongrass and lemon, the solubilizer and water. But in my bedroom, I do what I love. So the one that I've got there at the moment is a blend of Mogra, which is an Indian jasmine, the jasmine sandback. Um, I have violet leaf, which is a green sort of, it's, it's just beautiful. It's a, a, an anti-inflammatory oil that I use in my skincare. And, uh, and I love the smell. I love that green smell. I also put linden blossom. And uh, I've got at the moment grapefruit and blood orange as well. So I kind of just play, you know, it's like making a perfume for your bed. Um, but whatever makes me feel good is what goes on there. And, you know, if you, if you I change my bed every week, it's that's a lifetime habit. Um, but, you know, sometimes if there's something going terribly wrong and you need to actually, you know, go a couple of days longer and you think, oh, I, I just want to freshen it up a bit, just, you know, pull back the sheets and, and, uh, and give it a spray and leave it open for a couple of hours. So uh, it's beautiful to be in control um, with the smells around you. So, um, yeah, so those are the things that I have around me as far as um, cleaning goes. Um, as I said, the things to do with like skin and hair and all the personal hygiene products, is it would be another whole hour to teach you those. Um, if you are going onto our Facebook sites, I've put recipes up just recently um, on the main business site for toothpaste and mouthwash. Um, you know, you in the, the secret oil garden, you can go in and Google like shampoos and conditioners. So I'm completely natural in my hair. Um, usually people are really, really gray. And I was grayer than this until I stopped using um, uh, nasty chemicals and my hair went darker, which I find really fascinating. I have no idea why. Um, and I, um, because I've got curls, like I, instead of using chemicals, I just put a bit of argan oil on my hands and scrunch it. So there's lots and lots of things that I can teach you in that way too. Um, I haven't got a photo of my bathroom um, that I could find quickly this morning for you, but it's really fascinating in there too, because all I have there is the little brown bottles, you know, whether they're labeled with the Amazing Scents label or I've stuck something in there that was completely different and it's a handwritten label. So, um, yeah, I don't have all of that clutter in there either because I'm not using as many things. So, yeah, it's an incredible journey, absolutely incredible journey. And uh, the biggest thing that you'll notice is how you feel when you reduce all of this. You will feel more energetic. Your skin will look so much better. And you will find that as you start to detox that you'll need more and more good water mm. because you've got to flush it out. Yeah. And there's lots of things going around at the moment, you know, with putting onion on your feet and doing all those sorts of things for detoxing. And you can do those too. Like I've tried all of those. Um, have you guys all heard of Barbara O'Neill? No. No? 
So Barbara O'Neill, is she's an Australian lady who's well-known all over the world and she uses all these old wives' tales that, you know, were passed down over, over the years. And I remember vividly when I was a child, like, you know, we never told our nana that we had an upset tummy because she would make us drink cod liver oil or mm-hmm. castor oil or bicarb and water was another one that just about made me throw up. Um, but, you know, we've got to realise that people lived before chemicals mm. and the more chemicals that we have, the more likely we are to get sick. And mm. we don't want to get sick, do we? No, no. we want to make a difference. Mm. So, uh, yeah, it's just like, you know, do it. You know, I'm not going to use washing powder anymore. Give your washing powder away to someone else. Just mm. stop buying it and get what you need. Do you know what it cost me for six months of washing powder? Sixty dollars. So, mm. so cheap. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And my washing machine before the one I've got now lasted for twenty-four years because it didn't have any chemicals in it. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And it was really funny because about sixteen years in the exit hose, so the water that was coming out of the washing machine. Um, it it cracked and um, I had to get a guy in to change it cost $25 mm-hmm. and he was fascinated and he said like there's nothing wrong with your washing machine at all um, and I said well it would be the eucalyptus that had made the hose go at the back so $25 in maintenance on a 24 year old washing machine Pretty yeah, good. Just blows me away. Mm. Um, actually, talking about washing machines, they do get dirty and they do sometimes need to have a load put through with no washing. Um, and I would just put a big heap teaspoon of the washing powder. Mm-hmm. Um, I usually will put about a litre of vinegar in, just tip mm-hmm. it in. I never measure anything. Mm-hmm. And another couple of cups of bicarb and just put it on a hot wash and let it go through and that will completely clean any residue that you've got in there because residue even though we don't use soap Mm -hmm. we use a lot of oils and there's a lot of oils on our clothes Mm -hmm. and so that it leaves like an oily sort of residue that if left it gives little black flecks in the washing yeah so if you do that every six months um yeah the all-purpose spray is the cleaning spray Mm -hmm. yeah that's um that does exactly the same thing Mm. yeah there's nothing i wouldn't clean with it i clean the inside of the um the fridge i cleaned my freezer out the other day and once i got all the ice off i just sprayed it with the cleaning spray Mm. yeah it's clean everything um if i was doing a lot of windows um that would work out quite expensive with it so i have a friend who's a glazier and I picked his brain because one of my homes, I had a glass splashback. It didn't matter what I did with it. I could not get it streak free. And it was a, like a really beautiful red aubergine type color. I'll never do that again. <laughs> and I said to him, what would you use on this? Because it's driving me nuts. And he said, corn flour and water. So I went and bought some corn flour and I put a a dessert spoon of um, corn flour into a litre of water. You can't spray it. It blocks the nozzle. And um, I just mixed it in a bowl. Cost five cents to mix it. It's nothing. And then I just microfibered it on to the glass splashback and then left it to dry and then microfibered it off and it was just amazing so then I thought this is my brain then I thought wow I'm going to try that on my windows so I was spring cleaning and doing the windows inside and out and I mixed a bucket load of it up and did it and it cleans like it's so amazing you know I hate to think what chemicals you would have to apply to get a look like that and it costs you like you know it would have been probably 50 cents to do the whole entire house that's a beauty yeah Mm. so there's always things it's not always oils you know and I'll Mm. teach you every way that I've done it but the oils do the great majority of it Mm. yeah that's awesome thank you so much that's okay so much to learn Uh, I'm going to go and throw the washing powder away straight I better order some um, bicarb Bicarb. (laughs) yeah yeah and uh, get get on board start with that one 
Yeah, if you have any trouble with sourcing anything, just give me a yell. Thank you. And, um, and I can help you. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's like on our website, we do have large bottles, 50 ml bottles of lemon and okay. peppermint because we use that a lot with yeah, cleaning. Good. Good. Um, eucalyptus, I can't match that. So I'll send you to yeah, buy the other. It's got yeah. it. Yeah, you've got to be reasonable and mm -hmm. real when it comes yeah. to that. Um, so yeah, but you know, if there's something that I haven't told you, you just need to ask. It's just, that simple thank you yeah. that's wonderful any so, last questions that anyone wants to put in the chat do you ship internationally we don't normally but i can get a price for you sure yeah yeah um the other thing is that there's um i can't think of them offhand but i've got a couple of the american companies okay um that I'll I could drop, send. Yeah, I'll drop you a note and ask you about that and yeah. get the handout from you as well. Yeah, no, that'd yeah. be great. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. So pleasure Thank you to, so to much. be here. <laughs> yeah, and look forward to seeing the girls that joined us and anybody else that um is following along with us on YouTube or um through our other channels, Facebook. They're looking forward to connecting you with your Facebook group so they can learn uh, to how to live chemically free in their homes. Thanks, Leanne. Thank you. Nice to meet everyone. Thanks, Leanne. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. I'm going to turn off the recording. Where's the button gone? Here we are. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs>